Hey, it's Lonnie Tyler. Welcome to Zen in Your Studio. Thanks for checking us out on our YouTube channel, and thanks for joining us. Uh, one of the things that is uh, sometimes overlooked um, is next, next, right next to breathing. I, I think breathing is actually probably the, the, the biggest uh, item that, that can be overlooked as a beginner in the voiceover industry. Uh, the second biggest thing to me is microphone placement, how to properly place your microphone so you get the best vocal tonality and vocal sound out of your voiceover sessions. Well, for those of you that uh, did not come up through radio and, and uh, you know, have your own little home studio that you're putting together trying to get into your voiceover career, let me give you a little bit of advice on microphone placement, okay? So what I try to do, and, and I think what, what you're going to see uh, in, in a lot of professional voiceover studios, is that the microphone is placed, uh, it, it's a, it's a, a drop-down microphone basically. And what that does is it allows you to have a little bit more room, a little bit more freedom. You can use your hands a little bit more underneath. Um, uh, I tend to keep my microphone mounted to the left because I'm right-handed, so it's easier for me. I tend to use my right hand a, a, a heck of a lot more, so that's why I've mounted it over to the left to give me a little bit more room. By all means, if you're left-handed, um, go ahead and mount that thing to the right, and you can use your left hand all you want. Um, I also like to keep it at about a 45 degree angle uh, on the stand at a 45 degree angle. It's hard to get you that shot in the studio, um, but at about a 45 degree angle. And I like to keep this diaphragm just tilted in just a little bit. And I usually keep it all at about nose level. Um, what that does is that helps with the plosives, um, breathing out, popping, that type of thing. It doesn't hit the diaphragm directly on. Um, it actually kind of skirts the diaphragm, so you're not going to get that popping sound. The The pop filter also helps out with that, too. Um, but, of course, that's part of proper vocal technique is to minimize the plosives as much as you can. And if you can get some help from the equipment that you have, um, that's always helpful as well. The one last thing I want to talk about uh, is proper microphone technique. And we can do a whole other section on proper microphone technique. But it, well, once you get your microphone level, this is the, really the only thing I want to touch on here, is once you get your microphone to the, to the space that you need it at, you stay about six to eight inches away from the microphones, which is usually about this, uh, away from the microphone, not from the pop stand, or from the pop filter, but from the microphone. So you would get right about here would be right about the, the, the spot that you would want to be at. Um, those of you that come up through radio, uh, you, you tend to get into the microphone like this. I did when I first started doing more voiceover work, and it's just too poppy, too plosive-y. Um, you, can, you can do that when you're doing kind of a more gentle read or a more uh, seductive kind of read or sensual kind of read. Um, you can get into the microphone, and you'll hear how it's totally different when you do that. Um, I would, again, try to stay six to eight inches away as best you can unless you're going for that more intimate read, or if you're, uh, of course, pull away if you're going to do more of a robust type read, um, then pull away from the microphone. You'll hear it in your headset, the, the difference in sound, and just adjust accordingly. All right, that's it for uh, placing your microphone. Thanks for joining us this week. We'll see you all again next week on Zen in Your Studio. Have a great week.